Today, we're going to look at some techniques that you can use to combine tables, but not just combining them, but also keeping the context of where the tables came from. Now you're going to see something familiar, and then I'm going to teach you something that I think you've never seen before. So stay tuned. So combining tables is something very common in your data transformations because you might have different versions of tables, different budgets where you're like, I want to attach those together. Now on my screen, I have three different queries and they have amounts for our general ledger and it's for sales expenses and assets. Let's see if we add those together, how that can work. And then I'm going to show you how I can get some context here. So the very basic table that I want to start with is the sales table. I want to attach the expenses and assets table to it. Now the user interface does that by going to append queries. Append queries is new and you can select three or more tables, select them all, say, add, well, let me just remove this one. There we go. So just the three of those press. Okay. And this will create a expression that uses the table combine function. And within table combine, you can see the three tables hard coded in there. And all that it does is it grabs the tables, paste them underneath each other. And if all of the columns are identical, you will see it like this. If any of the columns is new, so it exists in one table, but not in the others, it will fill the remaining rows with null values for the tables that don't have that column. That's the idea. Okay. So this looks pretty good already. But what is the problem here? The problem is I can't really easily see where all of these rows came from. So if you know your data, you might know that the first four rows are from the sales data, but sometimes you might want to get some more context. Now, one way to do that is going to each of these tables, go to add columns and add a description. But today I want to focus on another function you might not yet know. Let's see how we can alternatively achieve the same outcome. So what we're going to do, is there is a function called table from partitions. And you could see your partition as a piece of the table we're going to create. Now the partition will give us an additional option to create a column that says, where did that partition come from? So I'm going to call that column uh, origin. Now, next we need to provide the partitions as a list and the partitions should have a name for the partition and the location, which is the table name itself. What does that look like? Okay. So we're going to require a list of lists. That means there is an inner list and an outer list. So let me paste the outer list down. And what we will do is put all of these on their own row. And let's start with the first one. So the first inner list, so the first list within my list will have a name for the table, which is sales, or let me just call it uh, my sales for now, my sales from the sales table. We close our curly brackets. Then on the next line, I open the curly brackets. I'll start out with my expenses and I'll get those from the expenses table, close the curly brackets. And then lastly, because we have three tables, we have another curly brackets. We're going to provide a name, my assets, have a comma, and then close this one down. Now what's remaining is let me just paste this one up. So this is the first argument. This is the list of lists. And then basically those are the mandatory arguments. If I then click here, you'll see that everything is still combined. So hardly anything changed, except we now have a column that says origin. So we now know that the first four columns came from my sales table and those are from my expenses and those are my assets. Clearly you can give those a name that you like, right? I made them different here so you can differentiate between the sales name of the table, but I could have made this, uh, give, give it a description called sales and it will adjust as well. Now there's one thing remaining. The data type of the origin column is currently missing. Fortunately, the last argument of table from partitions allows you to provide a, a data type as well. So I could put type text here and then click and you can see that the data type has now been included as well. That's just a quick tip to give you some more context. And if these topics are something that you want to learn more about, I can recommend looking into our newest book, 
the definitive guide to Power Query M, where we delve into function syntax. We look at what curly brackets are, what the fundamentals are of the M language, so that you can't just copy paste the code, but you can actually make something by yourself. Well, I hope that was helpful. If you like this kind of videos, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel. It really helps my channel grow. And then I hope to see you in the next video.